So good evening, San Matthew. It's a wonderful day today. It's the 4th of March. So we are working through the spring and it's a new season with a new expectation. I have so many, I, I think it's a wonderful season and really being lent and, you know, with the expectation of, of that we going to arrive to the Holy Week, you know, and with the spring in our back, I think it made everything different. And so it's good, have some hope today, you know. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit about house. And, and I think it's important to have that hope that God is with us all the time. Let's start it. Oh God, May speed to say us, O oh Lord, may haste to help us. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Bless are you, Lord, God, to our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. In the darkness of our sin, you have found in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, then free from this misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer, right before you, O oh God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our heart and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Oh, today we're going to read Psalm 71. It's 71 from verse 1 to 10. Psalm 71, from verse 1 to 10. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put out chain. And your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and say, Be my rock or refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my frontiers. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my, my youth. From my birth, I have released on you. You brought me from my motherhood. I will never praise you. I have, I become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth I fill with you praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when I am strength is gone. For my enemy speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspiring together. They say, God has forsake him, pursue him and seize him, for no one will be rescued him. Do not be Far from me, my God, come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish in chain. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will be tell you your righteousness did, or your saving act all day long. True, I know, no, no, the relay. They know. It's a sound that, you know, think about maybe an old man thinking that he feel alone and he has so many enemies, you know, making joke about him, but he trusts totally into God. He said, don't be far from me, my God. Come quickly. And this is a wonderful prayer more when we have you know, many other people around us and it's growing older, then God always will be with them 
always. And I like that, that prayer because related to that psalm. Forsake me no, O Lord. Be no far from me, O my God. Forsake me no, O Lord. Be no far from me, O my God. May hate to help me. O Lord, my salvation. Be no far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me, no, Lord. Be not far from me, O oh my God. Today we are going to read in Galatia, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. Galatia. Charted, no, 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 Galatia. Sorry, I am did that wrong. Galatia was uh, last week. It's Hebrew, Hebrew chapter three. Hebrew chapter three from verse one to six. Sorry about it. It's the book of Hebrew in the New Testament. It's talking about the greatest of Jesus, the Moses. Therefore, holy brother and sister, who share in the heavenly calling, fish you thought on Jesus, who we knowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him. Just as Moses was faithful in all God's house, Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses. Just as the builder of the house has greater honor that the house in sale for every house is building by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoke by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house. Indeed, we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a little bit about that house. Eh? And, and that is my reflection for today. What is, you know, what does house, the God house? This time in the church session, the word house appear. Six verse and six time the word house appear. Say the house of God. That is widely common misunderstanding in our day, especially among Christians, that they, they that just turn the house of God to mean a church building. Eh? It's okay, but it's misunderstanding. It's not 100% everything. There is nothing more destructive to the greatest measures of the New Testament that believe a building is never truly called house of God. Neither in the New Testament or in the Old Testament, in the present or in the past. Certainly no church building from the day of the early church could properly be called the house of God. The early church never referred to any building in this way. In fact, the early church has no building for two or three hundred years. People who was meeting in houses, in, in, in gardens, in public place, a market, wasn't a building, a physical building. Only three, three hundred years after Jesus. When they refer to the house of God, to them, that mean to people. When they say the house of the, they talk about home, the house of God, the church is not a building, it's the gospel. I know it's difficult for some people, and I am not saying that our church is not a place when God dwells. No, no, it's different. But when it, the, the Bible talk about the house of the Lord, is talking about you and me. In the 60, in, a, in, in, the, in a chapter 60, 60 of Isaiah, that's magnificent prophecy, the Lord say, heaven is my throne 
and the air is my food stove. Where is the house that you will build it for me? Where is the resting, the resting place? My hand made all that thing. That's Isaiah 66, verse one and two. That's not well in tempo made by human. God said with Paul <clears throat> was talking to the people in Athenians. He reminded them, he said, does it not dwell in temples made by human hands? God don't live, God don't dwell in temples made by human hands. At the time he spoke that word, the temple was still standing in Jerusalem when he was talking about that. No, God doesn't not dwell in buildings. You know, don't dwell in buildings. And buildings, he lives in us. So that is the house of God mentioned here. What is the house? The answer is very clear. The house is us. We are. God never intend to dwell in any building. He dwell in people, in men and women, in boys and girls. That was the divine intention in creating man to be the tabernacle of his dwelling place. That's the beauty. He created us because he wants to live with us. He wants to dwell with us. Paul, the Apostle Paul, referred to this in 1 Corinthians. Or do, not, he said, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, who you are receiving from God, and then you are no, no, it's yours, it's inside you. God's purpose is to dwell in your body and take you, you know, and, and show you the manifestation of his life about, about everything. You and I are the temple. And that's this amazing picture, beautiful, when we think that he is with us all the time, but he lives in us. In that dark night when you wake up in the middle of the night and you feel isolated, when you see that everything has become very damaged, when everything is wrong, God is with you because he lives in you. I know we are waiting to go back to church. I, I am, I know Richard is and all the leadership. But remember, that's will be important. We're going to be together. We're going to enjoy to be there. But it's not because God is there. God is with you. He's with you today. And he wants to be with you. And we're going to pray today. And we're going to thank you him because he lives with us. Because he's with us. He dwells with us. He lives in your house. You, you can do that exercise today before you go into sleep. Go to every part of your house, big or small, and, and declare, God is here with me. He dwell in my house with me. He dwell in your house because you are there. Wherever place you are, God is with you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank for you, great love and blessing. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire life. Forgive us for some for sometimes forgive, forget that we are no say enough thank you to you. Because you live with us. You are with us all the time. Sorry that we forget that. Then you dwell in us. Your Holy Spirit dwell in us. So we are with you all the time. We ask that we will walk in your blessing and goodness today. Then we can talk to you because you are there all the time. Then your face should shine on us. Then you will open the right door for our life, for our loved one, for the people that we love because you are with us all the time. You know everything about our life. Lord, I ask you to establish the word of our hand and bring the fulfillment of all the things that we started in you. Bless our congregation. Bless you house every place in Hillingdon, in London, in England, in the world. 
because you live with us, you dwell with your people. So bless us. We pray that you will make our way always closer to you. You're going to show us your way all the time. Give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice and to make us strong by your huge love and grace. We want to continue to love you, Lord, and, and watch you, Lord. In your name, Lord, we pray. continue with the Lord prayer. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
giving us the day of our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Let us bless the Lord. Send be to God. Amen. So remember today, before you go into bed, that God dwells with you. God is not in St. Matthew's church. God is with you. God is living inside you. And he wants to bless you. And he wants you to know he's there. Make the difference to know that he dwells with you. You are the house. You are that building where he dwells. God bless you. See you tomorrow.